So now, let's just sort of recap where we're at right now. So I'm gonna pop back over to the game. So we have our ship, it's got all the stuff, we have an environment, and we have this new camera, uh, and apparently Razer Synapse has an update, which I'll ignore. And so we can see as the, the ship goes, it pulls away from the camera. If I slam on the brakes, it kind of uh, crunches back up on it. Uh, we got nice pitch, yaw, roll, dampening, and the whole thing feels pretty good. However, at this point, as I'm driving around, the the vehicle feels a little lifeless, right? It's just sort of there. There's nothing really selling the idea that it's hovering or floating or flying or whatever. So we're going to look now at adding some VFX. I'll put this slide up for just one moment so you can see that I'm not lying. Cycle number six, adding VFX in particles, visual effects, uh, often abbreviated VFX. And so what I'm gonna do is I don't really wanna get into manually setting up the modules of every one of these particle effects because those take a really long time and then placing them at all these little positions and stuff like that. So instead, here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, down in my scenes folder, we have the rocket scene that I'm working on, I just because of what I named at the beginning, but whatever you named your scene. Uh, I have this other uh, scene here called particles. And I'm just gonna open this up. We're gonna take a look at what's inside. I've opened up the particle scene um, and I'm gonna hit play here in my scene and I'm just gonna see, so these are the four main visual effects that we're using as part of this ship. And I'm gonna talk about each one of them here. So I'll just come back to my scene view. So the first is the thruster here. So this is our thruster and it's a fairly simple particle effect. And so we can see this is what the Unity particle system looks like. And it really is just a collection of modules. That's what our particle system is. These little modules that just control little little bits and changes and uh, of, of how these things work. So we can see we're emitting some particles that have some lifetime and some speed. We're emitting 500 of them a second. Uh, no particular shape or anything. They have some color over lifetime, which is gonna give it that sort of uh, whitish blue to whitish purple. Uh, and then we have some size over lifetime. We can see here it's just gonna, it's gonna kind of balloon up and then shrink down, which is what gives it that sort of teardrop look that we can see here where it balloons up and then shrinks down. And so that's effectively what we have. It's a very simple particle effect. And what we're gonna see is that most of the really successful particle effects, some of the, the best particle effects are actually really simple. And the way we use them is what's really gonna sell it. Uh, and so these may look basic now, but by the end, these are gonna feel really cool. Now, one of the things I wanna mention about the, uh, these thruster particles here, is that I wanna pay attention to the start lifetime, there it is, start lifetime, because we're gonna control this in the game by just modifying that lifetime. So when our ship needs to like power on thrusters or whatever and, and start driving, you know, we can just adjust that lifetime and it's going to make the particles live longer and thus the thruster fire is gonna come out further as they travel along. So that's the thing to note about that effect. Now the next one I want to look at here is not this checkered background, but the thing that's in front of it, which is kind of hard to see. This is going to be our heat exhaust, right? You know when heat pours off of something and it sort of ripples the airwaves and stuff like that? You can kind of see it, but you can't really see it. Well, that's what we have here. So we have this heat distortion particle effect. And if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, I'll notice that the material for this particle effect is actually a glass shader. And so it's just some bumped glass. And if I really wanna see it in the scene, I can just uh, adjust the tint and say that's what the particles actually look like. Now we can't tell because without any tint, it's just the distortion, but that's what's really happening. It's just emitting some particles in a fan shape there, and uh, it's applying just some glass distortion, which makes it look like heat rolling off the back of the ship, which kind of makes it feel alive. Right, the actual particles to it are pretty simple. Right, so again, we just have some basic uh, lifetime and speed. Has some emission, we're emitting 50 a second, and the shape is a cone that's just basically flattened out. So we're just basically emitting in that sort of fan shape. And then we don't really have much of a color over lifetime except to fade in and out those normals, and uh, just a little bit of rotation over lifetime, 45 degrees, which gives it that fan this way and, and that way sort of shape. So again, a very basic effect. Most of the time you don't even notice it until like you kind of notice it and you're like, oh, that's really neat. That's a, like a nice little embellishment. Um, you can see that if it gets in front of some other types of effects, sometimes you can notice it like that. Uh, but for the most part with its positioning and stuff, you won't ever see it. So then we have the wall grind particle system, which is the first one that's actually two different particle systems, two different particle systems to build this effect. So the first is these blue sort of sparks, which feel kind of, you know, basic, generic, it's basically just, if I look at the renderer, I can see it's got an impact shape material, and then impact shape material is just rendering an image, a 2D image that looks like that. 
and by applying a little bit of rotation to it, it makes it look different each time. But it's really just the same image rotated, right? The other part are these sparks, and these sparks basically just have two random colors, either yellow or orange, and over time, uh, they change color to be, you know, mostly fade to red and then to clear. Now, this looks like a very simple effect. They're just little kind of stretched particles that are either this bright yellow, bright orange, and fading to red and then clear, and you think, that would never sell me on the idea of sparks. That doesn't look like sparks at all. And you're right, right now, it doesn't look very much like sparks. It looks very simplistic. But once we add the post-processing effects, you're gonna see those sparks look awesome, right? And it just sells the effect because it's very basic and it just, again, provides a nice canvas for us to apply some more artistic look and feel to it. The last thing to kind of talk about here are the trail uh, renderers. So these are the only ones that aren't particles. That's why this, uh, this cycle had to be called VFX and particles instead of just particles because these technically aren't particles. So we have two trail renderers. And a trail renderer basically just renders a line over the areas that it has been. So as it moves around, it's rendering a trail behind it. And so our ship is gonna give off these sort of light trails or vapor trails when it goes above a certain speed. And again, it, it's cool because it makes us feel like we're going really fast. And it's also really cool in the multiplayer version because you can see the trails of the person you're following and whatnot and maybe see where they hit a wall or use it to like sort of ride right behind them and stuff like that, it's pretty neat. So those are the particle effects that we're going to be using and that's kind of how they're put together, you know, sort of the breakdown of how we're gonna be using them. So I'm gonna go back to my scenes folder. I'm gonna open up my rocket scene. Here we go. Rocket, I like that name. Uh, and I am going to add some stuff to my ship. So because of how we handle the ship, right? So we've got the ship, we also have the ship body. So the ship is where the ship always is. See how many times I can say ship? And then the ship body rotates a little bit more. We don't wanna put the particles on the ship because we want them to rotate with the body of the, of the ship. So I'm gonna be placing these particles here on the ship body. If I go down to my prefabs folder, I have a VFX subfolder, and right here I have a ship VFX. Now this game object itself doesn't have anything on it. It just exists so that our other particle effects, here are the thrusters left, thrusters right, trails, wall grind, heat distortion, and just a point light, which is our exhaust light, um, so that we don't have to tediously place each one of these like, oh, negative 0 0.1.5, 0.01, negative 1.6, not point, not one, and anything like that, uh, we can just use this particle or this prefab and that's gonna position them all where they should be, uh, which is what we want. So I'm just gonna drag and drop that onto my ship body so it becomes a child of my ship's body, just like that. And we'll see here, that adds a few things. So we've got the thrusters, a left and right uh, thruster effect. Uh, we've got uh, the, the trail renderers. We've got that wall grind, which is just right in the middle of the ship right now because it's gonna be moved to where we collide some heat distortion off the back of this, and then this light is gonna make it feel like the thruster particle effects are actually emitting fire. It's gonna make the back of the ship glow. Um, also, it's gonna be our brake light. When we hit the brakes or when we go backwards, it'll turn red, letting us know that we are braking. Now, to make these actually work, so if I hit play right now, we're just gonna have particles. So we have exhaust in the back, we have the thrusters, the light renderer, the trail renderer is gonna be there no matter what. We have particles just sort of spewing in the middle, we can't quite see them because they're in the middle of the ship. We wanna control these a little bit. And so I have some code that's gonna do this. Now most of the code is very, very simple. And it's also worth noting that most of these are cosmetic effects. They just make the game feel better. They don't really change how we play it. So I have a script called vehicle AVFX, audio visual effects. And I'll open this up here. And the first thing we're gonna see is just a whole lot of variables, just a whole bunch of variables of all the things we need. And now you might be thinking, I really don't wanna drag and drop all those variables on, and you're not gonna have to. I'm gonna show you a really neat way to avoid doing work, which is what I like to do. Uh, and so we've got the left and right uh, thrusters, we've got the wall grind particle effect, the light trails. We define a minimum speed, so we have to be going faster than 20 meters per second in order to get those light trails to appear. Um, we're gonna define a color for when our light is thrusting, a color for when we are braking, and then for our audio stuff, which doesn't exist yet, we're gonna do that in a future step, but the code is here anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna basically increase the volume of the engine and the pitch of the engine based on how fast we're going. So as we go faster and faster and faster, the engine's gonna get louder and louder and louder and pitch up and stuff like that, and it's gonna, again, audio is gonna sell the feeling of going fast. All of this is about making us feel like we're going fast. All right, so 
You may or may not be familiar with the concept of the reset method. It's amazing it's how much time this saves us and so many people don't know whether it exists. The reset method is called by the inspector, by Unity, whenever we add a script for the first time or whenever we tell the script to reset by right clicking it and saying reset. And here's where we can put all this really long uh, code that, uh, that finds all these objects for us, stuff we don't want to do at runtime because it's really inefficient. All right, like for instance, you never want to run gameobject.find at runtime because it's really inefficient as it searches every game object in your game. Uh, but in the editor here, when you know it's not runtime, that's the perfect time to do that. So when the engine, or when we call the reset method, uh, we'll automatically find our particle systems, we'll find our wall grind particle system, we'll find our light trails, we'll find our exhaust light, we'll set up our colors, all that work is gonna be done for us. We won't have to set up a single variable, which is exactly what I like. All right, and if we ever reset that, it's still not gonna save all of our work. Then, actually going through, this is quite simple. So, uh, we're gonna record what our starting uh, lights were, what the starting start life of our particles were, stuff like that. Every update, we're just gonna update our thrusters and our light. We're gonna say, hey, if we're moving fast enough, show the light trails, uh, click and drag your code to break everything. Otherwise, don't show them, hide them. If we have engine audio, we're gonna pitch it up and down based on the speed percentage. We'll get to audio here a little bit later. When we update our thruster particles, we're gonna say, okay, what, what's their lifetime supposed to be? If the lifetime is greater than zero, then we play the particle effects and we update their lifetime. Other otherwise, we stop them. Same with uh, our uh, exhaust lights. What's the intensity that we want? If the intensity is greater than uh, zero, then we set the color and the intensity. Otherwise, that means we're breaking or going backwards, so make it red, you know, and make it chill that way. And then finally, when we collide with stuff, if we collide with the wall layer, we're familiar with that concept from the vehicle movement, we're gonna move the particles, the wall grain particles, to where we hit the wall, collision.contacts, uh, dot point, and we're gonna play them. So we move it to where we hit, and we hit play. And then when we leave collision, we stop playing those particle effects, all right? And so a pretty simplistic, straightforward script. And now, I'm gonna apply this script to my ship. I'm not applying it to this uh, ship VFX uh, part, uh, prefab I just dragged in. I'm applying it to the body of the ship. All my, I like to, just personal preference really, but for a workflow tip, I like to put most functionality right on the root of the object. Otherwise, if it's in a child, people may not know it's there while they're working on a project, right? So I like to keep everything right up top. And so on the ship itself, I'm gonna add the script. So I'm just gonna go to add component, scripts, and then I'm gonna go to vehicle AVFX. And you'll notice, look, it filled out all of those variables for me. I didn't have to do any of that. And if I try to right click it and go to reset, like, oh, I'm gonna break it all. Nope, it, that's what the reset method does. It finds all that stuff for me, right? Which is super awesome. I don't have to fill any of that stuff out. So because I've already added that, that vehicle VFX or AVFX uh, prefab and I've added the vehicle AVFX script, I'm gonna hit play. Now I'm gonna see my heat distortion right off the back of the vehicle, which is pretty cool. When I go forward, my thrusters are gonna power up and I'm gonna see the light uh, actually gain some intensity, which makes me think, okay, those thrusters are giving off light. And then if I hit back, I'm gonna get a brake light, which is pretty cool. And then if I get going, I'll see my trail renders appear. There we go, once I'm going fast enough. And when I hit the wall, I get some sparks. Now again, the sparks, they look okay, right? They're nothing amazing yet, but it's really cool how much the post-processing effects make those sparks look like real sparks, it's really cool. So what you're gonna do for this step, first and foremost, is you're gonna go to your prefabs folder and you're gonna go to the VFX subfolder and you're gonna locate the ship VFX prefab. And you're gonna expand the ship in the hierarchy and you're gonna drop that ship VFX prefab onto the ship body. Finally, you're gonna go to your ship parent object and you're gonna go to add component, scripts, and you are gonna add the vehicle AVFX script. You won't have to set up anything else on that script. Then save your scene, hit play, and test it out. <laughs> 